Toradora Book 1 Chapters 1 through 6. There is something in this world which no one has ever seen. It is soft and sweet. If it is spotted, I'm sure everyone will want to have it, which is why no one has ever seen it. For this world has hidden it quite well, so that it is difficult to obtain. But, there will come a day when it is discovered by somebody, and only those who should obtain it will be able to find it. That is all. Chapter 1 Damn it! 7.30 in the morning. It was a fine day, and I'm inside the house. The house was a double room plus kitchen apartment facing south in a two-story townhouse. About a ten-minute walk from the railway station. Rent was around 80,000 yen. I give up. I just can't get this right. A frustrated hand wiped the mist from the mirror. The rundown bathroom was foggy due to an early morning shower. So after wiping the mirror, it returned to being cloudy. It was pointless to take anger out on the mirror no matter how frustrated one was. This stuff is nothing but a ripoff. Make yourself gentle with floating banks, that slogan was seen in the latest men's fashion magazine. Takazu Riji's bangs were now floating. As the article instructed, he pulled his bangs at length, blow dried them until they stood up, and then gently rubbed them sideways with some hair gel. He specifically woke up a half hour early in order to make his hair resemble that of the models and have his wish granted. Nonetheless, maybe I was too naive in trying to change myself just with my bangs. Riggy dejectedly threw the trendy magazine, which had taken him a lot of courage to buy, into the garbage bin. Unfortunately, his poor aim men had completely missed, opened itself up as it landed, and tilted all the trash out of the bin. The open page read you can still make it in time for the start of school. Gentle or wild? Our journey towards modeling. Were it up to me, I'm not too sure if I would care about modeling. Still, I wanted to change. But I failed. Feeling defeated, Riji wet his hands with water and messed up his hair which he had spent so much time making up. He reverted to his usual randomly straight hair. He then knelt down to pick up the trash that was all over the ground. Ah? What's this dot 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 m dot 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 mold dot 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 it's moldy. Even though he had always wiped the steam off, even after spending a whole day last week cleaning out the mold in the kitchen and bathroom. All his effort had gone to waste in that horribly humid room. Biting his lips begrudgingly, Riggi tried to see if he could wipe off the mold with some tissues. Of course, it was never going to be that easy, and he ended up tearing the tissues to shreds. Damn. I just used them all up a while ago. I'm going to have to buy some mold removers again. For now I'll have to leave them aside, but I'll definitely come back and destroy you guys. Riggi glanced downwards at the moldy patch while picking up the trash. He then gave the ground a rough wipe with some paper towels, clearing up any loose hair and dust and wiping off the steam on the washing basin before lifting his head up and sighing. Oh yeah, pet food. Hey. Inko Chan. Ah. A high pitched voice responded to the high school student's ferocious shout. Good. He's awake. Getting himself together again, Riggi went barefoot into the wood and tiled kitchen, took some prepared pet food and spare newspapers, and headed towards the corner of the tatami laid living room. Removing the cloth over the birdcage there, Riggi greeted his cute pet which he had not seen all night. Now, other people may raise their pets differently. But this was how the Takasus raised their pet parrot. Because he looked rather horrible when he slept, every morning before he woke up, he had to be covered with a cloth. Good morning, Inko-chan. A yellow parrot, that was Inko-chan. As usual, Riji added some pet food while talking to him. Gee, good dot 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 morning, his eyes blinked upwards in a rather unpleasant and enigmatic way, though he still managed to reply in Japanese. Though he had just woken up, it looked like he was in quite a good mood. This was why he was cute. Inko Chan, try saying let's eat. L, let's, E dot 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 let's eat. Let's eat. Let's. Eat. Okay, enough. Now let's see if you can say that. Try and see if you can say your name dot 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 come on, say Inko Chan. I, I, in, I, in. I e e i dot 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 i. Inko Chan seemed to be using a lot of energy, as he shook his head and rapidly puffed up his body, 
and then flapped his wings quickly. Dot 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 I. His eyes squinting, one could vaguely see the gray tongue that stuck out of his beak. Maybe he can do it today, thought his master as he gripped his fists. In the end. Blake. Arg. Why are birds so dumb? As expected when you have a brain that only weighs a gram, Reggie sighed, wrapping up the soiled newspaper. He threw the newspaper into a plastic bag. As he was about to put it together with the other trash in the kitchen, comma dot 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 where dot 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 are dot 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 you dot 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 going. The idiot lying behind the Fujima seemed to have woken up as well. Richan, is that your uniform you are wearing? Why? She asked wearily. Riji elegantly wrapped up the trash bag and replied to the voice, I'm going to school. Didn't I already tell you yesterday that school starts today? Dot dot ah. Opening her legs on top of the futon, she repeatedly muttered the following as though she was about to cry, then, then. Then, what about your chan apostrophe s dot 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 lunch? I haven't smelled any food dot 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 didn't you make some for me? Nope. Itilda. Then dot 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 what's your chan gonna do dot 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 when she wakes up? There's nothing good to eat. I'll be home by the time you wake up. I'm just going to the term opening ceremony. Wa dot 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 is that it? He 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 he, she smiled as she closed her open legs together and began to clap her hands dot 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 sorry, clap her feet. Opening ceremony, huh? Gritstilda. That means, Richan is gonna be a second year from today on? Let's set that aside. Didn't I already tell you before that? No matter how busy you are, you must always remove your makeup before you sleep. Since you moaned about how bothersome it was before, didn't I specifically buy some special makeup removing tissues? Riji inspected her surroundings a bit better, comma dot 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 ah dot 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 ah. You've gotten makeup powder all over the pillow. I can't wash that off. You should take better care of your skin, you aren't young anymore. Sorry. Her leopard spotted panties were completely exposed. As she got up, her large breasts shook while some of her messy blonde hair got stuck in her cleavage. Whether it was the waving of her hair or the long nails from her fingers, she gave off a very feminine feel. But still, must have drunk too much, I just came back an hour ago. Ah so sleepy, she yawned, oh yeah dot 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 I brought some pudding home. As she exhaled and rubbed her thick eyelashes. She slowly wandered towards the convenience store bag at the corner of the room. That appearance, her cherry lips muttering pudding, her plump cheeks, and her round eyes, such childlike features just did not seem to fit her. Though she was a bit weird, perhaps she could still be called a pretty lady. Ha huh, dot 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 Richan, I can't find the spoon. Maybe the store assistant forgot to put it in? Can't be. I saw him put it inside. That's strange. This was Takazu Riji's mother Takazu Yasugo, stage name Rano. 33 years old, she always claimed to be forever 23, she worked as a hostess in the town's only bar Bishamondan Kuni. Yasuko poured the contents of the convenience store bag out and rummaged through them at the corner of her futon. Her little face frowned, it's so dark in here dot 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 I can't find the spoon like this. Richan, can you open the curtains? They are open. Hey Tilda. Ah, that's right dot 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 since I don't always wake up at this time, I must have forgotten. Inside a dark room, the rather odd mother-son couple sighed together. It was the window facing south. It had been six years since they moved in here. Inside this little house where the two of them lived, their entire source of natural light came from the south side window. As the entrance was on the north and because they were surrounded on the east and west sides by their neighbors' houses, only the south side had windows. Despite this, sunlight had been abundant, especially during the mornings. There was no need to turn on the lights from sunrise to sunset, unless it was raining. The bright sunlight used to always shine plentifully on Riji while in his uniform preparing breakfast for the two of them and on Yasuko who would be sleeping soundly. However, all that came to an end last year. Damn that apartment building. Just what kind of people live there anyway? And turn on the lights already. Last year, just a few meters from the south side of this house, a 10-story luxury apartment building was built. As a result, 
the sun no longer shone through. This had driven Rigi to the brink of madness and frustration countless times already, the laundry could no longer dry, the tatami now expanded due to the humidity, curled at the corners and grew moldy, and sometimes it would even get frosty. The wallpaper was starting to peel, which must have had something to do with the humidity as well. It doesn't matter since this is just a rented apartment, Rigi wanted to tell himself. Yet being extremely sensitive about keeping a place tidy and clean, Rigi just could not get himself to tolerate and compromise on such a thing. Looking up towards the white-tiled high-class condo, there was nothing those two poor people could do but stand shoulder to shoulder with their mouths open. It doesn't affect me much, since your chan sleeps in the morning anyway. There's no use complaining. Besides, the rent's gone down by 5,000 yen as a result. Taking out a spoon from the kitchen and handing it to Yasuko, Rigi scratched his head and said, Well, I'll be going. This wasn't the time for family bonding, it was about time to leave. Wearing his Gikuran jacket, Rigi bent his ever-growing body and pulled up his socks. As he made sure he brought everything, he suddenly realized the faint call within his heart. That was right, today was the beginning of a new school term. After the opening ceremony came the changing of class. Even though he had failed in attempting to change his image, it wasn't enough to make him depressed, as some hope still remained in Rigi's heart. Or was that just expectation? Anyway, it was that sort of faint feeling, though he did not find it appropriate to express it. I'm going. Remember to lock the door, and change into your pajamas. Okay eh? Ah, uh, hey Richan, Yasuko laid on the futon and bit the spoon with her molars. She began to smile like a child. Richan looks more energetic than usual today. Fight hard. You're a second year now. This is an area which Yachan has never been to before, you know. In order to give birth to Riji. Yasuko dropped out of high school when she was still a first year, so she was not familiar with what life as a second year was like. Rigi felt a sense of sadness for a moment. Dot 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 yeah. He smiled for a bit and raised his hand. This was to give his thanks to his mother. However, this well intentioned act led to an unexpectedly bad result. Kaya. Yasuko yelled and began rolling to and fro, and finally said that phrase. She had finally said that phrase. Richan is so cool. You're looking more and more like your dad now. She said it. Rigi silently closed the front door and looked towards the sky. He spun his eyes as he felt he was being sucked into a whirlpool beneath him. No. I don't want that. I don't want that. Just shut up. That. That's the one thing I don't want to hear. Especially today. You look just like your dad. It seemed as though Yasuko didn't understand that this phrase caused Rigi a lot of torment. It was also the reason he bought that kind of magazine and tried to make his bangs float gently. Leaving the house, Rigi headed towards the school which was within walking distance. His tightened face looked twisted. Despite this, he still walked with great strides as though he was riding the wind. Sighing, he placed his fingers over his bangs in order to cover his eyes. This was a habit of Rigi's. Indeed, the source of Rigi's agony was none other than his eyes. They were bad. It had nothing to do with his perfect eyesight. It was their appearance, they just looked fierce. This past year Rigi had been growing up at a rapid pace, he now had that manly look. Though he wasn't the super handsome type, he was not exactly the aloof geek either. Ahem. Anyway, he didn't look bad, though no one else had said that, at least that was what Rigi thought. Yet his eyes were unusually fierce, they were so bad that it was no joking matter. His eyes were the sort that tilted upwards with the white parts occupying most of his eyes while his pupils took up a small section of them. Of course, these were just the basics, that was not the worst part. Since his eyes were big, the white in his eyes would constantly reflect a very strong, stinging glare, while his tiny pupils would move sharply as though they were about to slice the opponent before him regardless of Rigi's intentions. It was these eyes that usually led to a person running away at full speed upon coming into eye contact. He knew that all too well. In fact, when he saw a group photo with himself, even he would be at a loss after wondering, geez, why does he look so pissed? Ah, is that me? On the other hand, 
it could be partly blamed on his rough personality. He spoke in quite an unrefined way, which had something to do with his extreme sensitivity. This was why he rarely joked around or said anything foolish. Maybe it was because of that, or maybe it was because he lived with someone like Yasuko, which caused him to lose all virtuosity and trustworthiness. Above all else, Riji prided himself in being pragmatically protective of himself. But, as a result, Tatakazu kun. Are you trying to defy a teacher? S. Someone. Bring me a bit on. No, I wasn't. I was just trying to apologize for forgetting to hand in my homework. I, 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 I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to bump into you. It was that guy who pushed me over to you. Who is going to get mad over getting bumped on the shoulder? I heard Takazu Kun gate crashed a graduation ceremony of some other school while he was in junior high, he even took over their broadcast room. Stop making me sound like I'm some sort of bad delinquent, am I going to get all these misunderstandings all over again? Thinking back on all these painful memories, Riji couldn't help but sigh. His grades were not bad, and he had never been late or absent. He hadn't even gotten into an argument with people let alone into a fist fight. To put it simply, Takazu Riji was just a normal young person. Despite that, due to his fierce eyes, and it was only because of this, everyone had come to the conclusion that he was some kind of vicious delinquent, his only relative being a night hostess also indirectly lead to this conclusion. After spending a year with his classmates, most of the misunderstandings had been resolved. A year was not short, especially for a high school student. The problem was that everything started anew today, not to mention that his effort at changing his image had ended in failure. There was still something to look forward to in changing classes, since Riji wanted to be in the same class as a certain person. But when his thoughts moved to the torment that he would have to face afterwards, his naive expectations instantly shrunk in half. Not to mention Yasuko's big mouth. No, that was wrong. All the blame had to go to his father's troublesome genes. Your dad, huh? He's in heaven now. He was quite cool, used to calmly sweep his hair backwards, his sharp shoes were always shiny, and he always hung such a low and gold chain around his neck while wearing a casual suit with his Rolex. Inside, he always stuffed a thick magazine. What for? When Yachan asked him that, he said so that I don't have to worry about getting stabbed. I was so moved Tilda. All Riji could think of was how Yasuko swooned when talking about him, and then there was the sole photo of his father that was left behind. His father's pose was just as Yasuko had described him to be. Standing open-footed while looking proud, he carried a small briefcase under his armpit. He was dressed in a white suit with a flamboyant open neck shirt. The two golden rings on his fingers glittered and he even wore a diamond earring in one ear. And then there was his face that read you talking to me? with his chin pointing downwards towards the camera. One of his hands was groping the breast of his mother, who looked much younger than she was now. His mother, carrying a pregnant belly, smiled cheerfully. His father even had a gold tooth as he smiled. He was actually quite gentle, and serious, and would never hurt a normal person, or at least that was what Yasuko would say, but why on earth would a gentle and serious person become a gangster? and who on earth would let such a young high school girl get pregnant? Most importantly, those eyes. If one were stared at by those sharp eyes, they would quickly hand over their wallets and hope nothing else bad happened. Those eyes were used for just that, violent extortion. And yet those objects were now fixed upon his face. Riji suddenly shuddered. If even he thought of his father that way, no wonder everyone still misunderstood him. By the way, it was possible that his father was still alive. According to Yasuko, while helping an underling escape, he was beaten into a pulp and dropped to the bottom of Yokohama Harbor. However, there was no grave, no altar, no artifact, no epitaph, not even a body, there was no record of such an event ever happening. Sometimes a drunk Yasuko would jokingly say for no reason I wonder what Richan would look like if your dad were to suddenly return? Ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh. I'm just kidding. Dad is probably meditating in some icy cold room. As his son, I just feel that, hey, Takazu. Morning. It's a great morning, 
isn't it? Hearing someone call him from behind, Riji quickly turned around and raised his hand, Oh, Kitamura. Morning. Can't help it, if I stop and wait for my friend to catch up, people will think that I'm gonna strangle him to death, even though that's not the case. Riji silently considered this. Being misunderstood was unavoidable, and in such an event he would have to explain as nicely as he could. As long as he spent time on it, people would eventually understand. Though it was quite troublesome. That was the only thing he could do, so it was the only thing he had to do. Looking up at the blue sky, the bright sunlight caused Riji to squint his eyes. Today was a fine day, there was no wind. The cherry blossoms silently wilted at this time of year and gently fell on Riji's head. Riji continued to carry his torment and strode forward in his shiny black shoes. The weather sure was great for today's opening ceremony. Whoa! We're in the same class as Takazu, you gotta be kidding me. He sure looks intimidating, how scary. So who's going to go talk to him? Nope, not me. Why don't you go? Hey! Don't push. Say whatever you want, I am no longer affected by anything. Riji entered the classroom in the most unfazed way possible, ignoring the glances of his classmates and sat on his desk with his back towards them while staring into the distance with his sharp eyes. Licking his dry lips, his legs began to shake on their own. To a bystander, he looked like a vicious carnivore on the lookout for weak prey. Same as usual, huh? Looks like there will be guys that misunderstand you here as well. Oh well, it will all get sorted out after a while anyway. Besides, I'm with you. Not to mention there's quite a number of our classmates from class A here. Oh, don't worry about that, I don't really mind. Riji replied with a gentle smile to his good friend Kitamura Yusaku, who was in his class again this year. Honestly, Riji was currently in a very good mood, but not in a way where he would cruelly lick his lips just before pouncing on his prey. If that were the case, he wouldn't be grinning from ear to ear and ready to lift off like a rocket. The reason he was happy was not because of his relation with Kitamura. To a friend like him, Riji would simply smile gently and say, Looks like we're in the same class again, Kitamura. No, the reason he felt like blasting off like a rocket was because of, Oh, Kitamura-kun. We're in the same class this year, er. Huh? Ah. Gushida, you're also in class C, eh? You mean you only just found out? How cold. At least check the class roster on the first day of school. My bad. What a coincidence. This means we can have more time to sort out our club meetings. Ahaha, uh -huh, that's right. Oh, Takazu-kun dot 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 right? Do you still remember me? I appear in front of Kitamura-kun from time to time, she paused. Ah, uh, um, is it okay if I call you Takazu-kun? Dot dot ah uh, dot 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 her. At that moment an angel revealed herself. Before Riji's eyes was a smile that shone as brightly as the sun, as warm as the sunlight that used to dwell on the south window of his house, illuminating everything within his sight. The light rays were intensifying to the point where Riji could no longer keep his eyes open. Kushida Minori, right? A-H-H. Damn it. I got the words right. But. His voice just sounded too cold. Riji felt like screaming. Why did I only come up with a response like that? Why couldn't I come up with something better? Wow. You remembered my full name, I'm so glad. She paused a bit, oh dear. Someone's calling me from over there. I have to go, Kitamura-kun. See you in the first club meeting of the term as second years. So don't forget. Takazu-kun, let's talk again sometime. Seeing her turn around. Riji slowly and awkwardly raised his arm, but it was too late. She had already disappeared. She said she was glad. She said we'll talk again sometime. Kushida Minori. She said she was glad. She said we'll talk again sometime. He finally got his wish of being in the same class as Kushida Minori. She said she was glad. She said we'll talk again sometime. She said, she was glad. Takazu. Whoa. Kitamura suddenly appeared before his face, causing him to fall over his chair. What are you grinning at? No, it, it's nothing. Oh really? 
Kitamura pushed up on the frame of his glasses with his middle finger. Riji felt very grateful from the bottom of his heart, for Kitamura might have been the only person in this world who could tell whether he was smiling or not. There was one more thing he was grateful to Kitamura for. Kitamura, you, Riji fumbled his words. How should I say this? Er, you always seem pretty relaxed when you talk to girls, Riji went down to a whisper, like Kushina san. Huh? What do you mean? The eyes behind Kitamura's glasses widened. He wasn't being humble. Rather, he was surprised. Looks like he doesn't realize it himself. Riji decided to hold back what he was about to say to this rather dense person. His leisurely conversation with Gushina a while ago just sounded so natural. No, it wasn't just a while ago. Since last year, Kitamura had always been able to speak with her naturally. Furthermore, they were both in the softball club. Riji was always there, constantly trying to give her a gentle smile or receive a greeting from her, it was an effort that could move one to tears. To use soccer as a metaphor, Riji would be a center defender who hardly ever had any chance of participating in offense. It was also thanks to constantly being beside Kitamura and observing his cheerful conversations with Kushida that Ruji started to realize that she was really cute and that he liked her and wanted to become friends with her. Her various cheerful expressions. Her delicate body and exaggerated movements. Her innocent smiles and clear voice. Despite his intimidating appearance, she still managed to keep her usual cheerfulness in his presence, even to this day. That's Gushida Minori for you. For Ryuji, in order for a girl to become his girlfriend, she would need to be appealing to the eyes and as sparkling as the rays of the sun. Being energetic and direct was more important than anything else for him, and that was how a girl should be. But still, what are you talking about? How's it possible for me to talk naturally to girls? You should know very well what they like to call me. Ryuji couldn't help but sigh. How enviable. Just looking at the way Kitamura talked was enough to make his eyes bleed. Yet Kitamura continued, I'm no good with girls. I think I probably won't ever find a girlfriend for the rest of my life. Even though he wanted to answer with I don't think so, looking up at the blindingly radiant noble before him, Riji swallowed what he was about to say. No matter what he said, this fellow would probably never understand. Riji suddenly felt a wave of depression. It was true that the girls called Kitamura Maruo, after the typical Mr. Nice Guy from Chibi Maruko-chan. Perhaps there is some resemblance, explaining how he got the nickname. On top of this, he has many more traits, glasses with very high prescription, a straightforward personality, excellent grades, he doesn't follow the trend of being flirtatious, and holds quite traditional values. In the right situation, he would say that's correct. He is the sort of guy capable of creating a cheerful atmosphere in the classroom. Speaking of which, he is the former class representative, the current vice president of the student council, and the front runner to be the new president of the softball team. It is natural for everyone to make fun of him. His looks aren't the problem. No. To be precise, upon closer inspection one would discover that he is surprisingly handsome. Combined with his consistent personality inside and outside, as well as the ability to make fun of himself, there is absolutely nothing unlikable about him. So although he claimed to be constantly teased by girls, it wasn't because they hated him. Ah, so that's why, Riji finally understood. Come to think of it, Kitamura was quite popular with the girls, not just with Gushida, he was able to talk to all of them naturally. Whenever the girls saw him, they would go, I'm in the same class as Maruo again. To which Kitamura would nonchalantly reply, Oh? Is there a problem with that? And yet he claims that he's no good with girls. It's not as though they fear him like me. Just as Riji went into deep thought, he heard someone say whoa, scary. See? Here we go again. Riji laid on top of his desk and ignored those voices that he would occasionally hear. Just a while ago he was floating over the moon from being in the same class as Kushida Minori, so he did not mind others and what they thought of him. Sure looks formidable. I told you this guy isn't a normal person. Whoa, look at those eyes. If you piss the owner of those eyes off, you could get killed. The spell seemed to have been broken. 
Rigi started to notice that the non-malicious whispers began to increase. It might be better to hide in the bathroom until the new homeroom teacher arrives, Rigi thought hopefully. It would clear his mind a bit. So he stood up, and just as he was about to walk through the door, he felt something bump into his stomach. Rigi thought he had bumped into something, but there was nothing in front of his eyes. That's strange. Rigi moved his eyes around, yet all he could see was, students started calling out, yikes. As expected from Takazu-kun, is he going to make the first move? Has the death match started already? When I saw the class roster, I knew this was going to be a terrible class. All Rigi could see were the new classmates whispering amongst themselves. Are they talking about me? But still, why? One of the members in the class came up with the title, Clash of the Titans. We're already in the final showdown. Everyone was talking strangely. Clash of the Titans. Final showdown? What the hell are they talking about? Rigi tilted his head trying to make sense of what was going on. Are you not even going to apologize after bumping into someone? He heard a very cold voice emanating from somewhere. The strange and calm tone of voice sounded as though it was suppressing and holding back some emotion that was about to explode. Yet he could not tell where the voice came from. Huh? The mood became dark. Rigi glanced to the right, there was no one, he glanced to the left. There was no one there as well, apprehensively, he looked upwards. Fortunately, there was no one there either. That means, so it did come from below. Down, right below his eyes, in a place much lower than Rigi's chest, was a head of hair. The first thing he thought was that she resembled a doll. Anyway, she was very small. Her long straight hair softly fluttered and covered the tiny body of the palm-top tiger. Palm-top tiger? That mysterious terminology suddenly appeared in Ruji's thoughts, causing him to say it out loud without thinking. Seems like he must have heard someone whispering that nearby. Palm-top tiger? Then that means. Who is that what this little doll is called? Though she is small enough to fit into a palm, how is she like a tiger? Who you calling a palm-top tiger? This was not an occasion where one could think for a long time, as whatever it was began to lift her chin, and with her eyes. Whoa. It took three seconds. Everything went silent, though perhaps it was only Rigi's imagination. For an instant, it felt like a vacuum created by a shockwave just after an explosion. The background noise slowly returned to everyone's ears. By the time he realized it, Rigi found that he had fallen backwards onto the ground. It wasn't just him, the few classmates nearby were hit as well and moaned, while others were already getting ready to escape. Just what happened? I already know. Nothing really happened. It was just that this girl before his eyes, such a hopeless person. All she did was stare at Rigi with those two large eyes of hers, nothing more. That was it. Within a few seconds, Rigi had already been struck down by all. His mind went blank. His body felt paralyzed just by the sheer pressure she created. Rigi was repelled by her glare, or to be more precise, he was repelled by the aura that emanated from her eyes, causing him to fall on the ground. Their difference was way too large, they were on completely different levels. For a person whose eyes were no less intimidating, Rigi had been completely defeated, this was the first time Rigi understood what it meant to have fierce eyes. It included the necessary essence one carries as well as a ferociousness to match, or to be more exact, an intent to kill. HMPH. For a few seconds that felt like an eternity, Rigi felt a subtle contempt in her eyes that would not be swayed even if she were stabbed in the heart. A dragon. How lame. She opened her cherry lips and shot out words like bullets that carried a certain childlike quality to them. Her incredibly small hands roughly swept aside her fluttering hair while her soft eyelids hid her killing intent. Those eyes were now as transparent as the glass eyes of Adala and stared coldly at Rigi. She's cute, but she's scary as well. She had a pale white face, unbelievably long brunette hair, and tiny limbs and shoulders, while her shiny pupils were surrounded by gentle eyelashes. She was as adorable as a candy containing deadly toxins, as lovable as a flower that could kill just by scent alone. Yet when she stared at him, Rigi could feel the carnivore leaping out from those eyes of hers. Of course, 
This was all just an illusion, yet it felt more real than reality. The carnivore's weight had knocked Reggie down on the floor and it roared with a sound that shook deep into his blood. The sound it produced seemed to be saying, I can take out a guy like you anytime I want. The sharp claws and fangs slowly approached him, emanating a sense of bloodthirstiness and the scent of a beast. Compared to her small figure, the much larger illusion that loomed before him was dot 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 a tiger. Ah, ah ah, ah, dot 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 t that's right. Without realizing it, Rigi began to nod and clapped his hands. So that's why she's called the Palm Top Tiger. I wonder who gave her that name, but, isn't that a wonderful name? And such a fitting name as well, I'm impressed. The girl glanced at Rigi, silently uttered Dragon, and then looked at him with disdain. It was not hard to see why. Whether from the fall or from being ripped open by the Phantom Tiger, Rigi's Gakuran jacket was now open. Under his jacket, he wore a colorful Soru, Rising Dragon, t-shirt that Yasuko had happily bought for him. It wasn't like Riji had wanted to wear a t-shirt that would cause such misunderstandings, it was just that all his other clothes were taken to the laundry for that day and he wasn't expecting anyone to be able to see what he was wearing inside with his jacket on. Feeling embarrassed for some reason, Riji quickly covered his chest, like a girl that just got assaulted by a ruffian. At that moment, he saw someone tip-tapping her way closer. You're late, Taiga. You skipped the opening ceremony, didn't you? I overslept. Anyway, I am glad I'm in the same class as Minor and this year. Yeah. Me too. It was none other than Kushida Minori. She directly called the Palm Top Tiger Taiga, and even smiled and gently caressed her hair, while the Palm Top Tiger also intimately called her Minorin. Watching all of this, Riji began to hear the whispers around him. So round one is won by the Palm Top Tiger Ayaka? Looks like Takazu is only scary in appearance, he's no delinquent. Huh? Really? That's why he lost to the Palm Top Tiger. Besides, she's the real thing when it comes to ferociousness. The misunderstandings were resolved much sooner than Riji had expected, however. The Palm Top Tiger had an amazing name called Ayaka Taiga. Her height was 145 centimeter. Ayaka Taiga and Kushida Minori were what you would call good friends. From the various whispers Riji had heard, it was rumored her father worked as a fixer in the underworld. There was another story that her father was actually a karate master ruling the underworld in America. And then there was yet another that said she herself was a karate expert, but was expelled from her dojo for attacking her master. Back when she first entered this school, a lot of people were fooled by her beauty, and many guys lined up to confess to her. Of course their dreams were all ruthlessly shattered as they were intimidated, bitten, torn to shreds. There were quite a few that never did recover after they were mercilessly belittled by her. Wherever Ayaka went, her path was drenched with the blood of countless corpses of male students. There was just a lot of bad press concerning Ayaka Taiga. Regardless of whether the rumors were true or not, there was no doubt that she was the most dangerous being in this school. It was many days after the opening ceremony that Riji learned about these things, 